Hello, this is Sally Wiener Grada, and I'm here with Kat Rambo, the author of numerous books and short stories, and the president of the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, which we affectionately call CIFWA. Uh, Kat is also the curator for CIFWA's first ever fantasy story bundle. Full disclosure, I am honored that she chose my novel, The Winter Boy, to be part of the story bundle. Hi, Kat. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, this is a delight. Thank you for coming. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the CIFWA Story Bundle, how it works? Well, uh, this is a new program for CIFWA that just started this year. Uh, we partnered up with uh, Story Bundle, and we have offered two this year, the first of which came out in May, around the time of our Nebula Conference which featured science fiction, and this one uh, features fantasy, because that seemed like a pretty natural split between the two. And uh, if people want to buy the 12 books that are in it for $15, the, uh, the URL is storybundle.com forward slash fantasy. It's a great deal, and it supports Zipper's work. But 12 books, that must have been out of... The, I mean, you have an amazing um, membership at CIFWA of so many talented writers. How did you curate this? It must have been quite a job. I had an enormous spreadsheet. Uh, my husband teases me that my first approach to any project is to create a spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, and I did, I did read through all of them, and I had a couple of co-readers that also read and made notes. And the hard thing was winnowing it down because there was so much good stuff. Uh, so what I tried to do was create a fantasy bundle that really shows the gamut. Mm. Uh, we've got steampunk, we've got urban fantasy, we've got epic fantasy, we've got literary fantasy, we've got, you know, all just all over the place. And we've got one of the books that I was really pleased with is a Black Angel by Kajel Gold which is furry fantasy, uh, which I think sometimes gets a bad rap. It was the first piece I, I think, you know, the first furry identified piece I'd read, and it's terrific. It has a depth of emotion that I just enchanted me, and I knew as soon as I read it that was one of my keepers. Oh, marvelous, marvelous. Now, you mentioned that you uh, tried to create a bundle that had the diversity that fantasy can. Um, there are people who will, in knee-jerk reaction almost, automatically say, well, I don't like fantasy. Um, to me, it's some like somebody saying, I don't like having American food. I mean, there's just so much variety that you can have. Um, it, some can be involved in magic and wizards. Some can be cultural fantasy and be very political, like Winter Boy. Some can be furry, like Kate Joel's book. Um, how would you define fantasy as an overarching, enormous category? I think with well, a traditional split is, is magic versus science. And I think you have to sort of break that down a bit. And I think if you have magic, you are positing a system of usually of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that is one of the things that often informs fantasy and brings us to it because that is a question we are constantly confront in our lives is, mm -hmm. is what is bad and what is good and i think fantasy tries to answer that in a multitude of interesting ways i think uh sometimes my lack of uh, magic in my books uh makes people wonder where the heck i belong <laughs> because of that but um i feel fantasy also encompasses the good and evil but also uh putting it in a setting where it's not, there's nothing related to it in this real world as much as we would like it to be. Yeah, um, it, absolutely. It, but it, it's very difficult to define such a category. Now, Kat, I've always known how accomplished you are. I mean, I, I read your stuff all the time, it's wonderful work, um, but I read your bio in order to prepare for this interview. I read that you have over 200 works of fiction published. Wow. I mean, you're not 100 years old. How did you manage to fit that pieces? And, and is it possible to 
even give us an overview of what you write with so many works? Well, part of it is I am one of those people who, if you tell me I shouldn't do something or I can't do something, <laughs> I'm probably going to go tackle it. So I went to Clarion West in 2005, which was this intensive workshop. And one feature was periodically people would come up at parties or whatever, and they go, you know, some people, they don't write after Clarion. And, you know, and they'd, I'd be like, well, you know, some people, they don't write for years after Clarion. And I was just kind of like, hey, I'd be like, sort of get away from me. <laughs> and B, I had quit a lucrative job at Microsoft in order to focus on writing. And I did not have the luxury of being blocked for months. So post Clarion, I started a novel, but I also kept producing a story a week for a number of months. And I still... Wow. I try to shoot for I shoot for a number of words per day, but uh, and I'm I'm not claiming I always hit that, but I also I think it's really important. I reward myself for hitting it. I don't punish myself. I reward myself, and I think that's that's a better approach. Fabulous. How would you describe what you're writing? Um, oh, you have an overall uh, tagline that you use to explain what you write, or is well, it? all over the place. It, it, I tried to define it at, at one point, and I did realize there's art, there's sort of like groupings <clears throat> in that like all the near future stuff kind of clearly takes place in the same world, and there's two or three different worlds that I write in. But the fact of the matter is, I read omnivorously, and I think that means that I write some to please an omnivore's diet. Uh, the only thing that I don't really dabble in is hard science fiction and that's because I don't I'm that's I don't have a strong scientific background mm -hmm. and I keep meaning to go to one of those workshops that uh, teaches you science in a week uh, so I can write hard this up but I haven't managed it yet <laughs> marvelous um what are you working on now I am finishing up the edits to uh hearts of Tibet, which is uh, it's a sequel to beasts of Tibet. which I'll hold it up uh, which was my first novel that came out uh, from Wordfire Press. Uh, it was a Compton Crook uh, nominee, and I'm so happy with Hearts. I think it is a, a much better book than this. I mean, I was happy with this, but I think Hearts is amazing, uh, partially because I have uh, Kevin J. Anderson uh, ended up being the editor on the book. It has been just amazing at pointing out places where the pace is lagging or, you know, I sort of get meandered in my own word beauty. Uh, so it's awesome. I'm really happy with it. Just so this week I'm finishing it up. Congratulations. When will we be, have an opportunity to buy it? When will it be out? It should be out next February. Uh, is what we should do. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. Um, now let's go to Sifra. You are president. You've given a great deal of time to Sifra, a great deal of energy to Sifra, and yet you say you write stories that often. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> tell us a bit about what Sifra is and does. So Sifra was founded in, I, I believe, I want to say 1955, uh, by a group of writers, including Robert Heinlein, Bob Silverberg, Larry Niven, and basically they were what we call BNAs, big name authors. And they realized that the publishers were not being as kind to the smaller writers as they were to the big name authors. Uh, people were not getting paid. Rights were getting stolen. Uh, there was a case like J.R.R. Tolkien, one of the, a, a case that Sifa successfully helped with very early on was J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, Lord of the Rings got pirated here in America. Yeah. And Sifa was, was pretty key in getting uh, that solved. Uh, so for the last 50 plus years, it has grown and swelled. It is now a 501c nonprofit corporation. Uh, we give out grants every year. Uh, we administer an emergency medical fund. Uh, we have a membership of, I believe, close to 2,000 people now. And I, you know, I could talk about Stifa for all day, unfortunately, because I, as president, I don't just drink the Kool-Aid, I brew it actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for all the brewing you do because it's 
that was very helpful to all authors, not just it's uh, a membership of professional uh, science fiction and fantasy writers, but you team with the Authors Guild and ASA and all the other professional organizations and do some wonderful work to protect all of us. So thank you for that very much. Um, how can our viewers contact you and find out more about your writing, Kat? They can find my website at, unsurprisingly, catrambo.com will work <laughs> fine. And you can find me on most social media. I'm that on Twitter and Pinterest and right. all the other uh, time wasters on the you know, internet. And, um, and how can people buy this story bundle, the 12 books for $15, which is a remarkable deal? Well, they should go to the storybundle.com site and they should bookmark it because it's always got lots of good stuff. Uh, but if you go storybundle.com, whack fantasy, and by whack, I mean uh, that thing. It's my Yeah. Uh, and it's a great deal because you can, there's a minimum, I think, of $5 for which you get the, the lower bundle. But then if you go up to 15, you get all of these books, which is basically a buck a book. And mm -hmm. having read all of them, I can certify that they are terrific. And you will come away from it with at least two or three authors where you, you know, you've tried their work and you're like, yeah, they're on my list of people I want to watch for. Marvelous. Thank you very much, uh, Kat, for uh, doing all the work you do for CIFRA, for the curating of the bundle, and for spending the time chatting with me. Take, Take care. care and thank you.